Hey guys, welcome to Moving Up in Texas. This is our live feed where you guys, if you have any questions, you can put it in the comments. And I'm going to move my, still getting used to Zoom. If you can't hear for some reason, let me know, but I have a new microphone. Uh, just put in the comments if, if you can't uh, hear us very well. We can always change that. So anyway, today I have something special for you. I have my team here. Everybody say hi on the team. Mm -hmm. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and one thing that we want to talk about are Texas schools. And so I know for many of you, schools are important. If they're not important to you, that's okay too, because we're going to go over some of the best cities to live in Texas based on some of these dream home questionnaires that we received. So with that, um, we're gonna be talking about the best cities as well. Okay, so first thing though, what I wanna talk about are the best schools. By the way, if um, you haven't filled out a dream home questionnaire, the link is below, fill that out and we can uh, mention that as well as you can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of your amazing agents on this team. So, so guys, let's talk about, I'm going to move this so you guys can see because we're so fancy with our, <laughs> our setup here. Um, let's talk about, so we have a list of the top 20% school districts in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We also have a list for the state of Texas. So if you want one of those lists, then you can email me the link. Uh, the email is below, but it's also Dana Pollard group at gmail.com. Uh, if you want a copy of the top 20% of schools, but I want to give a, I want to have a discussion because just because uh, a district is not in the top 20% or uh, then, then what does that mean? Does it mean the schools are bad? <laughs> no. no. In fact, um, why don't y'all share a little bit and just, take turns, you know, your opinions on schools in Texas. Anybody can go. I mean, I can go first. So my daughter and my son grew up in Texas um, and we were not concerned about the top 20 or the top 30. And we just went to average schools. And when my daughter went to college, um, because the schools here are so advanced, just in general, they're so much farther along than everyone else. Um, they actually had an excellent start to college. When she went to college, her other friends that were in other states were struggling. They were not doing well, they were suffering, they couldn't pass tests, they didn't have good study skills. So, whereas my daughter graduated from the top um, of all of her class. And the reason being is because Texas schools are just great yes. in general. So it prepares them for real life. I love that, yeah. I love that. And so I can tell you that it doesn't matter if you're the top 20 or top 30, you're gonna get an excellent education. Here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think sometimes people come in and they're really intense on wanting the top 10% or the top 20% of school districts because they care about their children's well-being, right? They wanna be good parents and make sure that their kids are gonna get a great education. And we like to ask more questions about what is important to you in a school district because sometimes just limiting you to the top 20% is actually gonna be a disservice because there's some really amazing school districts that might fall right outside of that uh, bracket or some individual schools. So maybe you have a high school student and there's a high school with a very high rating that the entire district is not part of the top 20%. Um, but yeah, we have really, really great schools here. We also have a number of private schools in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, if that's an oh, option yes. you'd like to consider. Mm -hmm. yeah. Many great private schools. We always talk about homeschool options because mm -hmm. we homeschool our kids. We've also had them in private and in public, so we've got a feel for all of them. They were all great experiences. We just chose homeschool for each kid for different reasons. But yeah. anyway, yeah. that's that's another topic. Yeah. Any, Any other thoughts? Yeah, we also have the charter schools. Um, so several of the communities have charter schools now, and um, that's a great, great option as well. It's like a private school, but it's not. It's funded by the state of Texas. And there will be some fees, but I believe mostly in uniforms and things like that. But so several cities have the charter schools as an option as well. Yeah. And then, of course, um, a lot of the high schools that we have have the vocational schools that are available for juniors and seniors. And so that's another route. Oh, yes. So, mm -hmm. yes. And Keller has an amazing one. Birdville uh, put in, their, I believe, the first one in the state of Texas. And um, a lot of other schools come to Birdville to see what they're doing. 
and um, so that they can implement them in their school districts. So yeah, absolutely. And going kind of back to that back where hey, the top twenty percent does not necessarily mean um, does not necessarily mean that your all the schools are only in those school districts. When you're looking at the top 30, even 40% of schools, even 50% of schools, you can find pocketed areas where the schools are fantastic. One, one option that comes to mind is Flower Mound in Louisville ISD. Yeah. While Louisville ISD as a whole is not number or the top school district or even in the top 20 percent um flower mound is rated extremely high really in the top five percent of schools altogether uh same thing with Birdville isd eagle mountain saginaw isd boswell high school is rated so highly you can just find some tremendous schools amazing schools that are maybe not in the top 20 percent but that could fit for your needs so knowing what's important for you in a school district is great yeah. Um, two, two things. Uh, first of all, like the state of Texas has standard curriculum across the board. So I used to work in schools. It's called the TEKS. So every uh, student, whatever the class is, they're all learning the same thing. And you've got great teachers. No matter what high school, elementary, middle, you've got great teachers in every single district. And the second thing, some of you are very, very, very top tier districts. It's very competitive to make the football team or get an opportunity to shine because um, I mean, it's just it's very competitive. So if you want your student to have an opportunity to make that sports team or, or do this or do that, you might want to think about um, you know what the opportunities are in other districts as well. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Very, very good point. I'm glad Jennifer brought that up. So I had some clients that were starting off and they only wanted to be in Carroll ISD, which is totally fine. We can accommodate to that. But after they came to Texas, they toured the city. They felt really comfortable with a lot of areas. And uh, we actually just checked out a home in McKinney yesterday out on an acre because they're a little bit more accustomed to that rural life, how they grew up. And so they switched from wanting to be Carroll ISD, number one school district, just to a top 20% school district. Um, but just like Jennifer said, Carroll is one of those school districts that does have a junior and a senior high school. So instead of having multiple high schools within their district, everybody's going to feed to one. That, that does in, result in them and being in the state playoffs just about every year, making it go pretty deep. But even when I went to Keller ISD and it's a top 20% school district, there's kids that I played football with who are in the NFL now or in starting in D1 colleges. So it's yeah. it's all about just the opportunities and kind of where you feel like you need to Yeah, the what what fits your your children and your family the best, you know? Absolutely. So it could be that number one school district um or it could be that your kid gets to play when they would not have been able to play. Okay, so I'm going to check it real fast. All right, doing good, doing good. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go over some of the dream home questionnaires that came in and we're going to have a, a chat about where we may recommend for them to go. So we're just going to kind of go over uh, what's most important to them, price point, and, um, and we'll just kind of go from there. So I can get started. I can start. So I have Olivia and she's looking for a single family home uh, under 300,000. Three bedrooms is good. They do have a boat RV that they would love to store on the property, but they're okay if it's a one car port. You know who this is. Yeah. <laughs> Probably already talked with them, but that's okay. Um, this also gives everyone out there an idea of what they can get. They like the country life. So that opens it up. Uh, it doesn't matter HOA to them, with or without? No, they wanted HOA, okay. but with an RV, that's going to be yeah. a little harder. Yeah. yeah, so let's talk about that. So if you have a boat or an RV and you want an HOA, it's very difficult to find. Um, there are some, maybe I'd say in Haslett communities that they, you know, if it's on an acre or more than mm -hmm. they, will allow RVs or boats, but most HOAs, probably not. Uh, but under 300, we could find a really nice home. I would say if they like the country life, well, let me let me get y'all's opinion. Granberry, yeah. Ooh, Granberry, yeah. yeah. Weatherford, Weatherford would be good. I was gonna say Weatherford could be mm -hmm. a great option, even yeah. Keister. Yeah, yeah. 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 
40. 40 is not bad. There's yeah. Some, there's a little bit of, well, yeah, 40 is a good, um, if you're looking, if, if you're looking under 300,000, mm -hmm. 40 is a great mm -hmm. area. Yeah. Forney, um, like you said, Weatherford, Decatur. Sherman's kind of far out there, but I saw one of the properties there when I was in Sherman that were around that price and had lots of land too. Yeah, Sherman oh. is pretty cool. Yeah, Sherman's mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah. And I was going to see up in Ponder. Ponder's still close enough to the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, and they are mm -hmm. doing a lot of construction and they have homes out there too see this is why a team is really good because i've never been to ponder i graduated from ponder high school you did <laughs> i did class of 08 all right there were 48 people in my graduating class oh my goodness wow. it's bigger now they even have a football field we only had tennis whenever i was there oh wow, wow. Oh, my goodness so i'm gonna touch on something that dana said okay so he said if you're out in those acreage communities that have half acre or acre a lot of them are more susceptible to having voter rv storage i was just out in one yesterday where it was an hoa new build community the price point was a little higher but just as an example those communities are much more open to having sheds storage units yes. not just your 10 by 10 shed either like a true 20 by 40 shop yes which, uh, with a car lift in it with rv storage those hoas are more allowing that because yes. they know you want that lifestyle right it's just if we're going to be in our typical 50 60 square foot lots those are the neighborhoods that aren't going to allow you to have yeah, it yeah, unless yeah. you Absolutely. keep it in your garage yes yeah, so hassle would be one of those type of mm -hmm. neighborhoods what else exactly. where else would you see goes on last week up yeah. there in in Briar Meadow, they allow it. Uh -huh. yeah, they're one to two acre lots, and um, they allow the shops and they allow yeah. the uh, RVs and the boats. Yeah. yeah. Justin, just okay. going yeah. further outside of the Metroplex, where you can find that acreage still in your price point, I think is where you start with that. Yeah. Okay. And then seeing what's available. Well, Great. also looking at some resale options. I know that we're talking a lot new construction, but resale options. There's also voluntary HOA yeah. where I have found that a lot of those voluntary HOA communities will allow you to have a boat or an RV, That's especially true. if you have a gate on your driveway, which you can get yeah. built. It is pretty common for mm -hmm. people to get a gate built in the front of their driveway. And if you park behind that gate, they usually don't bother you. Okay, yes. Midlothian would be one too. Yes. I love Midlothian. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go on to another question here. What do you have, Kay? Um, I actually have somebody out in Houston. So oh. I don't know too much about out in Houston. Well, they tell me just be... a little bit because I've been down there quite a bit. Yes. So Vivi uh, is looking at, uh, she's looking at mostly new construction. She wants to be, under the three hundred fifty thousand dollar range, looking at more new construction, but two thousand ten or newer is okay for them. A four bedroom, two car garage, and they want to be within forty five minutes of Cypress Waters. Oh, and they do want to have shopping and restaurants nearby, and they want to have a neighborhood pool too, which is kind of cool. So they might have some um, communities out in that way. Okay, so Cypress Waters is really cool. It's a really nice area. So this is what's interesting about Houston is they are, that city is, they don't have any zoning laws like we do up here in Dallas, Fort Worth or in Austin. And so for them to develop an area in Houston, for it to be a nice development, a developer has to go out there and fully develop an area. And so Cypress Waters, that's, that's one of those places that's really nice in that regard. Um, but yes, I do think we'd have to refer them to a specialist in Houston that knows the neighborhoods a little better than we do. But the good news is, is we have the hookup. So, um, so if you're looking for Houston, we've partnered with some fantastic agents in Houston that know all the details and all the areas like we do up here in Dallas, Fort Worth. Same with Austin and same with San Antonio. So if you're looking in any of those areas, still fill out the dream home questionnaire and we'll get you hooked up with someone really, really good. Okay. All right, who else? Okay, I have Barat and Nassima. I hope I'm saying that correctly. So their special cities that they're looking at is gonna be Allen, McKinney, and Frisco. Got they it. wanna be within top 5% schools is what okay. they checked. So if, if that's very important for you guys, you wanna stick within those top 5% schools, 
we need to be taking a look at Frisco, Prosper, and Salina. I call that the 5% strip where you're going to be in your top 5% school districts. But talking a little bit about Allen and McKinney, they're both great cities. McKinney is going to have just as much to offer almost as Frisco. You're only about 15 minutes from Frisco when you're at the uh, intersection of 380 and 75, and there's tons and tons of shopping out there. So you have your Costco, your Target, your historic McKinney. It's so cute. I was just driving through there yesterday and lots of cool little coffee shops and just boutique places. So lots to do up there in McKinney. Is it easier to get a home in McKinney than Frisco right now? Much. Because it's <laughs> that much further out, um, even comparing to Prosper. And it's going to be less expensive too, just going to McKinney. Yes, yes. yes. And so I think that that's a really good opportunity because they're wanting 2015 and newer. Okay, um, yeah. So as far as availability goes, as far as price point goes, they're wanting to be about 400000 So there's a then lot of opportunities up there. And what I always tell our clients is if you're, you're finding what you like, but it's not on the price point you want, go a little bit further out. So yeah. maybe you're going up to Salina or Melissa or Anna, somewhere out there just on the skirts a little bit farther, as long as you're still in commute of where you want to be. Oh, I have comments on Salina. I have to share with you all. We were out last week in Salina and I don't know, Jennifer, if you noticed this, probably not. I went to um, Mustang, Mustang Lakes, Lakes. Mustang Lakes yeah. and there's one other lakes or something. Or light, light Farms. Light farms. Yeah, yeah, Light, light Farms. farms. Yeah. Okay, it was Light Farms. Mm -hmm. we're, I was driving through Light Farms and it was school time. Kids were getting out of school, it was 3, 3.30. It's like a culture. Everyone's on their golf carts yeah. picking up their kids. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because then I went to Mustang Lakes and it wasn't, there weren't as many. But I mean, I tell you what, there were so yeah. many That's families fun. on golf carts That's picking yeah. up their kids from that. school. Everybody was outside and there was like an ice cream truck. Yeah, ice cream they truck. Driving up, getting ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. So I there. love so Salina. I When yeah. we were up there, because it's so been a long nice. time since I've been up there. And I just fell in love with Salina. I love the town square. We love the people. Uh, the culture up there is very friendly, and um, you, they're like, what was what was our stat? It was like, oh, the average, the median home uh, year that the homes were built, 2018. Yeah. Wow. wow. So it's pretty much yeah. all brand new homes up in Salina. So Salina is definitely an option if you don't have to commute to Dallas, but maybe you're commuting to Plano. Plano. It's like the, yeah. from the downtown area, you can get to like uh, the mall there, the Stonebriar Mall. It's like 20, 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. talked to the people there, and they said it's going to be um, it's about five miles. The Dallas Fort Tollway stops, and then you got about five miles, but it's like a divided four lane road. So it's not that much further mm -hmm. than them. So it's, it is the yeah. number one growing city right yeah. now. Well, it's no longer growing. Frisco, y'all. Salina. I was going to say, Salina mm -hmm. Salina is one of those towns that I think are just looked over yeah. so much just because it is a little bit more rural still. It hasn't developed. Not a little bit, a lot. A lot of <laughs> <laughs> But the communities don't make it feel rural exactly. because they're master plan communities. Very yeah. much master plan communities with everything that you need within your community. Yes. So while you're there, you really don't feel much. Of course, in your commute time, as you're just getting out of your community and getting into work, um, you might feel that way, but you're not gonna feel that way forever. Right, and all the conveniences are right there in Prosper. Yes. So yeah. Salina's a great, that's one of the best cities. We're gonna come out, sorry y'all. Mm -hmm. We're gonna come out with a Salina video here pretty soon. They're so. extending the Dallas North Toll Road too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're gonna be doing that. They already have the bridge over 380. They're yeah. gonna be completing it in the next five to 10 years. But I always tell people, if you know, you want to get in early on phase one. There's Heck an yeah. 1,800 acre master plan community coming in Salina. 1,800 acres. 7,000 homes. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we're we're investing there too. To be the so, first in when it's. Oh, it's yes. It's like getting in a Winsong Ranch early. Yes. That's exactly oh, yeah. it. Oh, wow. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's exactly There were people that purchased homes in Winsong Ranch for three hundred fifty to $400,000 when there was you nothing there. Yeah. The lagoon wasn't there yet. And they waited on it. They waited those five years, and now their equity has more than tripled. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
So that's what Salina is today. I feel like Salina. So anytime someone asks us now, what's the up and coming city? Because you guys get that, right? Yeah. What's the up and coming city? It's Salina. Yeah. Hands so, down. I'm number so one. Glad we're talking about that because mm -hmm. I have Nabil and Samira here, and I was going to recommend Salina. Oh, yay. <laughs> oh, good. So um, I like that he's realistic. He understands that he has to stay in a hotel. So why that's important. Um, is a lot of people are thinking they can come here right away and just rent a home for a while. And I don't know about y'all, but it's really difficult to find a home to rent right now. So good on you for that you know. Too. For short yeah. term, there is an like apartment or Airbnb. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. good on you that you already know that that's half the battle right there. Um, they're 400 to 599, which is perfect for Salina and Aubrey area. There's mm -hmm. two of them. They're kind of sister neighborhoods right now, and they're both just as excellent. <laughs> um, they want <laughs> they want a four four a five, um, and they want to stand out. So Salina is where it's at for you guys for sure. Okay. And they want a newer home, three car garage. They have all those out there. Prosper has a community that has a three car garage too. So Prosper, Salina, Aubrey, you guys are great there. Um, they want to be close to a lake. Lake Louisville is right there. Good deal. So, good deal. Perfect. Good. There you go. All right. Um, I do not think Salina would be the best fit for okay. these <laughs> folks, only because they do not want to build. And I, I don't know. You guys will have to tell me if there's something big enough to accommodate for them already, possibly for resale. So they would like a larger home, 3,200 to 4,200 square feet, um, two story only. They're not interested in a one story home, uh, which is totally fine. They're coming from California. They're actually going to be here the end of this month visiting. Um, so I'm sure that someone is already in communication with them, mm -hmm. Helen and Matt. Um, and they're looking at Frisco, Allen, Plano, and McKinney. You're already working with them, Kevin, right? What's their price point um, again? Yeah. Up to a million. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I they're also looking at 400,000. <laughs> yeah, okay. so lower, they, they've marked quite a few yeah. on this. Um, so they're pretty flexible, it, it sounds like. Um, 600,000, which is a million. Um, so Kevin, I'm sure you've already yeah. suggested yeah. some great Yeah, but what, what about actually, you guys? Where would you recommend? I think that, I mean, they're already wanting to look in Frisco, Allen, Plano, and McKinney. They want to be in good school districts. Um, those are all really great areas. They, they want, they do have a boat or an RV as well, though. And so I don't know if there's Ooh, yeah, that's the challenge in, in that that's going to mm -hmm. But you know, we have, we have uh, tons of storage, RV storage and boat storage places. That's true. Very mm -hmm. located mm -hmm. to many neighborhoods. I was even yeah, and it's not too expensive. Or, or, or even Argyle would Ooh, be really flower great. Mound would be I was great. just about to say if Flower Mound and Argyle yeah. are going to be mm -hmm. really great yeah. options for that. Yeah, because you can get, find a bigger home. They, you can get a bigger home. Mm -hmm. Three car garages are pretty common. Yeah. And you can find something on a little bit more more land potentially so that you can mm -hmm. store your boat or your RV right there. They're in phenomenal schools. Um, and it looks like they want, you know, shopping, restaurants, entertainment, all the stuff that people like oh, to have. And they'd like to have a pool. Um, so I know there's opportunity out there to either add a pool or there's a lot of resale homes out there that have pools as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I think about Frisco in their lot sizes for under a million. Typically, the lot sizes in Frisco are much Very. smaller yeah. <laughs> than everywhere else, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so, if you're under a million, then that was our biggest caveat. So, they actually came in town. We checked out some homes. We were in Frisco, Prosper, Salina, and they didn't like it because of the yard size. Yes. So, we ended up going over to Hazlitt into the Vines, oh! which is where you can get half acre or acre with a pool and a custom new built wow. home. And so that's kind of the route that we're looking at. They're also checking out some of those four hundred thousand dollar homes in Frisco too as an investment property. Got it. Got Absolutely. it. Yeah, because Frisco is going to continue to go up. I mean, well, this whole area is going to continue yeah. to go up, but especially Frisco, Prosper, Salina. I almost say Salina more than Prosper in my world, but that's just me. I, I think know. that Prosper is going to go up more. Or sorry, Prosper will go up a little bit more, but um, we're we're reaching that cap kind of like Frisco, where you yeah. start to reach that cap a little bit, where mm -hmm. Salina has a lot more potential for growth. Yes, and yes. city limits are future. So. Yeah. yeah. Do we have a question yes, on there? We have a question from Cindy. It says, "I want to sell my house in California and buy one or two rental residential properties anywhere in Texas." And she's going to live abroad, but she wants to manage two properties here in Texas. So where should she look? Oh, cool. Okay, so this is a this is a great question. Let me give me my. Okay, I got some thoughts. I watched YouTube videos. <laughs> oh no, my my audio just got messed up. Okay, but they still get audio from my computer. Okay, so these are my thoughts on rental properties. 
um, in anywhere. Okay, so I was listening to uh, Bigger Pockets, if you've ever listened to that podcast or YouTube. They've been around, do you remember Bigger Pockets, like in our 20s when we were doing rental properties? We were doing rental properties in our 20s and they were there. They're still only they've blown up now, but they were saying, you know, with with the mandates where people didn't have to pay rent on some of their rental properties in different areas. The big rule of thumb is to find clients who have something to lose, meaning if their credit is important to them. You know they're going to pay rent, even when times get tough like COVID. so all that being said. What I do recommend is finding the areas, regardless of price point, the areas that um, probably attract families. <laughs> um, but I like a, a younger family because typically they rent longer than, say, older families that are just renting in order to get a house, right? So I love the young family type but maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> so all that being said, the most important thing is pulling credit, but I would probably look in the top 30 percentile of schools. And uh, my favorite is the zip code 76244. That's my favorite because the price point's still low and it has fantastic schools. Is that Fort Worth, but in Keller School It's Fort Worth, yes, yeah, city, mm -hmm. Keller School Districts. That's my personal favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, there's plenty. We have investors here that all they care about is cash flow, so they really don't care where they purchase. I believe as long as you're kind of close to a city, the, the prices are going to go up because there are so many businesses moving here that prices in real estate will keep going up. Even if the market crashes, it's going to go back up even if it's temporary, but I don't think it'll be a big hit here in Texas if it does crash. Kind of just to give other feedback, sort of opposite of what you said about looking for families that are going to rent for longer and be in school districts and things like that. Another great investment opportunity because there's a lot of colleges in the North Texas area. Oh, yes. A, a handful of really great colleges is to find a rental property near one of those colleges because you're always going to have tenants. Now, you might Denton. have more distraction yeah. to your home potentially with some college kids in there. But yeah, Denton has two universities, the University of North Texas and Texas Women's University are right in Denton, kind of on opposite sides of each other. Um, there's also a lot of restaurants and, and movie theaters and good schools, and there's a lot of fun things to do in Denton, so it also could potentially attract families. I actually rented in Denton for a number of years personally. Um, I lived there for about a decade. So Denton is a great opportunity. There's also um, uh, the Horn Frogs, TCU, mm -hmm. TCU in Fort Worth. Um, do they have to live on campus or, or does anyone know? The first two years they have to. First two yeah. years of TCU, they have to live on campus and then they could. But TCU live, is very expensive there. It is very expensive. I live about 10 minutes from the school. So it kind of depends on your like price point for your investment because there are yep. some larger, older homes that I've seen you know, for sale or for rent or whatnot. And you can have like six people living in them at a time. Um, but they are at a higher price point than what some people might consider a comfortable place for an investment property. Yeah, I was going to say Arlington. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Arlington, Arlington yeah, yeah, is so such Arlington, a great sure. option. It's so centrally located. You have uh, your universities there mm -hmm. um, can make some great investment opportunities and they're gentrifying a lot of those areas. I love, I love Arlington as an investment because it's lower price point. And just like you said, there's the colleges, families, um, certain schools do tend to hold people in longer. So there's a vein in Arlington schools that's highly regarded. Mm -hmm. And if you have a rental property in that vein, typically those families will stay there longer. So Arlington's a fantastic place to invest. Also consider San Antonio. San Antonio is the lowest price point at this point, and it's ridiculously how cheap homes are down there <laughs> for investment. I mean, so that's just a thought. I don't know that I, I mean, you can go to Houston and buy rental, um, but those are, those would be my preferences. Either and Dallas, I think Fort Worth or. That maybe we should just mention too, because Cindy may not know, or other people might wonder is our team doesn't do property management. I know I've been asked that before. So if you have a rental home, we absolutely can assist you in finding that home and figuring out, you know, we can even list the home on MLS to help you get tenants into the home. 
Uh, but beyond that, we don't do the actual going out to the house and fixing the dishwasher, taking care of the lawn, all of that kind of stuff. Right. But we do have connections. There's a lot of agents here in our office. We office out of the, the number one largest brokerage in all of Dallas, Fort Worth. And there's a number of agents in our office that have multiple investment properties and they have uh, property management companies taking care of those. So we do have connections to um, some great resources for you as well. Yeah. Since you're going to be traveling abroad, you're not going to be here wanting to mess with all of that. Yeah, absolutely. And we can always post it inside of the Keller Williams uh, social media. So yeah. we can post the home for you. That's and one thing I love about so, Keller Williams. Yes. Yeah, pocket listings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so real quick, we have two more, and then we'll wrap this up. Um, I have Chuck um, and his wife moving here from Olympia, Washington. And um, Chuck is retired, and his wife will be uh, soon in 2022. They are looking to uh, possibly the suburbs of Dallas and um, something that's important to them are trails, walking trails, and they like to get out and walk their dogs and everything too. And, um, and they wanna be close to the airport. So um, yeah, I absolutely have some, um, some opinions and, and places you know, that, you, that you could look and one of them is where I live. <laughs> so I live in, it's a Fort Worth address, but it's Keller District, Keller School District. And um, we have, gosh, over six miles worth of trails. And it's a natural area with creeks and um, walking trails, tennis courts. It's just a phenomenal area. And our HOA is ridiculous. It's only 66 a year. Is and your zip code 76137? Okay, that's a good, that's a great mm -hmm. investment area too. Yeah, your price point is in that area as well. And, uh, and for us to get to the airport is, 20 minutes and um so that's in park Glen. and when i have my zoom calls with clients and we're talking about the dallas fort worth area we will zoom in and look at areas and i guess i think i always just assume that everybody knew what the green part where it was but uh, i just want to point this out when you are looking and zooming in close to neighborhoods if you see a green belt you know like a green area that is trails and parks and so that's, you're going you know, to be in a neighborhood that has trails and parks. And we do see that a lot on the questionnaire, on the questionnaires that come yeah, through. Yeah, that's, so, that's a good point. And, and I've had clients say that they had no idea what that was and they appreciated yeah. me um, pointing that out. Yeah, so. does anyone else have thoughts on? A lot of people will tell me they want to, they want to have a view. That's really hard to do in Texas to get a true, a true view. Yeah. Uh, if you want to go in Flower Mountain, you may be able to, to capture a view of a hill and get some trees. But if that's something um, that's super important to you, it's either going to be waiting to find the right for your own home or being early on a new community to be able to get one of those green belt facing lots that's that backs up to a lake. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Texas is really, really beautiful. It is, and not but, and it is just flatter, right? So, especially coming, you said they're coming from Washington. Yes. So, I've yeah. been to Washington. I don't know if any of y'all have, I'm sure you yeah. have. Yeah. It's yeah. gorgeous, yeah. right? There's yeah. hills and mountains and trees everywhere. Trees. Like, you know, there's scenery without you even knowing, oh, this is scenery. It's just because that's just what you live in. And I just recently visited Michigan. Same thing. It's just gorgeous everywhere. There's lakes, trees, whatever. Texas doesn't really have that. Like, if you're in the city, there's a lot of buildings, there's streets, there's parking areas, there's cars, and then you kind of get outside of the city, and then there might be some flat land, cows, you know, maybe some trees, whatever. But um, I always encourage people to come visit so that they can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. Because there are pocketed areas in Texas that are gorgeous. Yeah. You can find yeah. the waterfalls and the trails and, you know, the cool lakes that you can swim in. It's all rocky and stuff like that. Um, but when we're looking in brand new communities or in resale communities, there's going to be some trees, but it's not going to be like Washington trees. <laughs> yeah, that's why I get excited about trees whenever I do find one of those yes. pockets. I'm like, trees, they're beautiful. And they're like, really? But I think it's good for us to set realistic expectations that, you know, yeah. it's not going to look like the wild, wild west, you know, unless you're moving to Lubbock, there's not going to be Although Vanessa, <laughs> Vanessa corrected me and she goes, what do you mean it's not beautiful here? She's yeah. like, there's green land everywhere because in, in la in la it's all concrete right. she said in, if you're in california unless you're on the coast or live on the beach or of course washington's different yeah <laughs> She's like, for her, it was like, it is beautiful here, mm -hmm. even though she came from California. I love it. I think it's really beautiful here. Of course, I'm a little biased because I've only ever lived in Texas. Mm -hmm. But after <laughs> yeah. visiting a couple of the other states, especially up north, I do realize that there is a very distinct difference. Yeah, there in, very much is. In the feel and the landscaping and whatnot. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, definitely beautiful. And we have more descendants here. 
Oh, we yeah. 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 see the star. Yeah, yeah, that is yeah. true. Yeah. That is true. Do we have another comment? We have another question. It says, what's your take on Wiley? Is it worth an investment as it seems to be affordable for new home buyers? I mean, I can answer that easily, but go ahead. I love Wiley. Yes. Wiley is one of my favorite <laughs> The areas. answer is absolutely. It's a yeah. great, great city. I think it's the coolest area because talking about hills and mountains, you find that over there. You're kind of in between two lakes in Wiley, which is kind of cool too. You're Lake Levon and Lake Ray Hubbard, and it's just, you're right in the center of it. Um, they have some amazing new home communities as well as pocketed areas with beautiful, beautiful older um, mm -hmm. homes. Which, and they have ranches. Yeah, they have ranches there. And you can just see out for miles and miles in some of those areas, which mm -hmm. is, again, it's not... Seattle, but it is beautiful. Yeah, and they have fantastic schools. Yes, yes. So great, it, great resale value. So investment in Wiley, yes. Mm -hmm. And you can find those new home communities that are a little bit more master plan, like inspiration and such, where oh, um, yeah. you can kind of go in and you have those hiking trails, you have those bike trails, you have those amazing. What do you think? Although I'm, Levon Lake isn't my favorite lake, but Levon Lake, no. And Levon Lake is one of those But it's at where, least a lake. It's nice to have. It's good for looking at. I don't think it's used as much, yeah, but Lake not. Ray Hubbard is extremely yeah. popular. It is very, very much utilized, um, and you can definitely have access points from Wiley as well. Yeah. So. Are there any other comments? No. Okay, so we have one more questionnaire. Yes. Okay, this is uh, Sultan, or Jan Sultan, and... Um, they're looking for something a little bigger, uh, 3,000 square feet and bigger, um, in a 400 to 500K price point. And they have to be by a golf course, that's the right thing. But they also have oh. them in the city. Okay. So I was kind of thinking maybe Flower Mound, Colony. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Trophy Club. Yep. Ooh, Trophy Club. Trophy Club. So Trophy Club has old homes. You can get in like four or five hundred thousand still. It's a whole entire golf course community. I think I could course. I could be wrong, but I think Trophy Club is going to skyrocket in value as people discover it. I so so uh, uh, all this you let me talk to you guys on YouTube. <laughs> Very few people have done any videos on Trophy Club, so I think it's one of those. It's kind of like South Lake it, before. No one knew what where South Lake is. was. Then some videos came out and just like blew up, and I think that right Trophy next Club's going to do that. New town center that they're constructing. Yes, it's right across the street from Westlake, which is the most oh, expensive yeah. town in the yes. whole Metroplex. Practically. Their sign says their sign minutes. says it's the safest city. Yeah. I don't know if that's true and or it's not. The, it's fifteen minutes from the airport. You have your shopping in there. You have and they have all the new shopping's coming into Trophy yeah. Club yeah. as well. Some really cool areas. Like you said, the gated if gated communities are important to you. Yes. It's very small. It's a very small yeah. they even have great community. In Trophy Club. Yeah. So and talk about golf carts. Everybody's yeah. riding yes. golf Yeah, <laughs> everyone in Trophy Club is riding their their yeah. At the barbecue awesome. place they literally have golf cart parking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so with that, for the four to five hundred thousand dollar price point, if you can yeah. get into Trophy Club, I think it's gold. It's yeah. gold. a little older home. They have uh -huh. some but they're and unique in their custom. Did they you are. know? Yeah. Though they're and older beautiful. homes, but they're custom and unique and beautiful hills and trees. Yeah. So you will find trees there because it's an older yeah. style. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. really yeah. nice. So mm -hmm. man, I don't know. I, I Trophy Club may be on my top of those. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, there is one negative. Freaking taxes that PID mm -hmm. in Trophy Club is a killer. You do have Northwest ISD though. Yeah. Which is a top ten percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have Charles Schwab across the street, so they yeah. can help you with yeah. the taxes. That area, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, very good. So this is the thing. So fill out the Dream Home questionnaire if you'd like a one-on-one -on -one consultation. You, there's a little button that says if you want your questionnaire addressed on the YouTube Live, then click the little button yes if you want. If not, that's okay too. Um, but anyway, go ahead and fill out the questionnaire, and we will get you set up. And we're out of time. We have a couple more questions. Oh, until next week. no, 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 okay, no. Okay. Let's answer the questions right. now. Okay. And then we'll, I think this we'll is go an unusual one. Any advice for realtors looking to move here from a different state? Ooh, oh, that's fun. I got advice. Join Keller Williams. Oh, <laughs> join <laughs> Keller Williams. And make sure you say Dana Pollard sent you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but Keller Williams, I do think. I mean, I've been at several brokerages. Yeah. I just love, I'm in love with Keller Williams. 
Um, but I would say, hmm, pinpoint the area that you want to sell. So if you're not tied down to a city, then come and discover, drive through the areas, get a feel for what you like because you'll be selling that area, <laughs> right? Um, so it wouldn't hurt to get into a smaller community, say Trophy Club or um, one of these communities that are a little smaller because you do get to know the neighbors a little better um, or a master plan community because you're gonna get to know your neighbors better and then you can, you know, your career can definitely I think maybe get a, a good start. One thing too to mention is that if you're moving from out of state and you're a realtor in another state and moving here, you're going to have to get licensed in Texas, right? Oh so yeah. There's a number of things, obviously, as you're already a realtor, so you know about this, but we do have Champion School of Real Estate. There's a location in Fort Worth and in Plano. Um, that's a great school. Then there's a number of other ones. Um, our office actually hosts what is called a career night where you can come. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that they do it maybe every other Monday or every Monday night. Um, you can come and just hear about how to get started in real estate, what schools are available, what it looks like to do it online. Um, again, you've already been to school, you're already a realtor, but you'll have to redo it all here. Um, I, I do, we would say do not do online champions, but do in-person oh, champions. Yeah, no. But you had an online one that you said you I liked. I did an online a which is a safe. Was yeah. it easy? Yeah. yeah. It's great. I we may it. be changing And it. I did champions in person because the Lord knows I could not sit at the yeah, I do in person <laughs> champions and you like yeah. ace your test every time, but yes. online it's terrible. Yeah, yes. yeah I took the online champions and, and it was terrible, awful. excruciating. Yeah. Excruciating. Yeah. One yes. thing too about Texas is that there's lots of small, I, I don't know if this is common in other states, but I know here there's a lot of like mom and pop style brokerages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there, some of them are phenomenal. I'm not going to, I have nothing bad to say about them. What I will say is learn what is important to you. Make sure that you know that going into it, because if you want to be in a position where you're supporting a large number of clientele, um, a higher price point, you're really getting your training here for the areas and, and really knowing everything about the Dallas Fort Worth area. My recommendation after having been on a small mom and pop team personally would be to seek out a larger brokerage that's well established and, and recognized in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Keller Williams, of course, is going to be one of those. Um, just do your research um, on what brokerage you join because there are a lot. There's a lot it can, of it's a big deal. Yeah, there's a lot of I would say saturation of real estate agents in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So don't let that deter you. Just know that if that's really what you want to do, there's a lot of people that are doing that, but they're not all going to stay in real estate as we know. That's how it works. Even in good markets. Yeah. Even in good markets, exactly. So my my recommendation would just be figure out what who what client you want Williams. to work with and make sure you join a brokerage that no. supports that. Yeah, <laughs> right. I do love color worms. Go ahead. Last question. What do y'all think about Forney? That is from Sherelle. Love it. I just like sold. I just Forney sold a couple mm -hmm. um, in there. They have five kids, and they drove in from Arizona this weekend just to make sure. Um, I sold it to them through FaceTime. They loved it. Five lakes within the community um, master plan. Which uh, community was it? Uh, Clemens Ranch. Oh, Clemens, yeah. Ranch. Uh -huh. Love, love, love. Okay. Uh, golf course is 15 minutes away. Walking trails, five lakes that you could fish in, two swimming pools, a clubhouse that you can rent for $35 a night that overlooks one of the lakes. Uh -huh. I mean, so much to do there. Oh, and by the way, they have two horses in stables up front. And you oh. can feed them apples and carrots. So. Okay. so I would, yeah, it's cute. So what I, I would Forney. say with Forney is it depends on what, I mean, it depends on what your op buttons are. Uh, Forney is great for price point. Mm -hmm. Getting a new home, it is probably one of the least expensive cities in the entire DFW area with great schools. Um, it's, I'm still waiting for more things to come to Forney personally. Mm -hmm. And there's the the bridge or the not the bridge, but the drive in can get a little congested into Dallas if you work downtown Dallas. But I like Forney because it's probably your closest to Dallas yeah. on the map if you do go into Dallas for activities or something. It's for the price point, it's really, really good. Um any other thoughts on Forney? Beautiful master plan communities. So again, for new construction, like you had mentioned, if you're looking for new construction, your price point is under that. 450 price point, 
I mean, you can really build a beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. home there, and you can get in with some of those top builders too. Yeah, it's obviously and, expensive for new homes, so to be able to get in forty, you're right next yeah. to Heath and Rockwall too, so you yeah. don't have to cross the bridge. Every true, time just to true. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they actually, yeah, I mean, you just go a little bit outside of forty to get what you need as it so develops. I love forty. Yes, yes. But they have great plans to develop forty as yeah, well. Yeah, they, they do. Have a ton they of do. Things coming. It's just going to take a little bit, kind of like Salina, but it'll yeah. take a yeah. little yeah. bit together. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, any any other questions? All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. See you next week. Like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. like